Guys, welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you how to fix a hood that was not fixed properly. So obviously somebody has tried to fix some rock chips and damage on the front of this hood. Uh, the paint's a little bit off, um, but what you can't see um, is there is some uh, rock chips with rust everywhere in it. And there's been some sanding going on over here. There's been some major grinding happening over here. There's still some rust happening down here, right? And uh, see, there's some rust happening here. This was just repaired, so this didn't take long to come back. Rust happens fast. There's some grinding marks there, grinding marks here, some really deep grinding marks here. So there's all of this, right? And kind of gives you an idea. There's this really sharp line here that we're going to feather back. To give you guys an idea of what we're going to do, uh, obviously, first, I'm going to protect the rest of the vehicle. I'm going to drape some painter's plastic over everything that I'm not working on. Uh, I'm going to start with, I think, something fairly heavy, like some 180. And I'm going to start feathering all of this back and see what we're working with underneath. And then I'll probably end up going and I'll put in light body filler and anything really deep like this stuff that just does not, it's not going to get feathered back. It's too deep into the steel and all this little stuff up here. I'm gonna kind of time-lapse a lot of this stuff because you guys don't want to watch all the boring stuff. What I'm gonna end up seeing is I'm probably gonna hit this with something heavy, like a 180 or something like that. I'll end up doing this up here a little bit less, maybe a 320. All these little rock chips I'm gonna grind out. I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of a rust converter and then I may uh, put a little body filler in there, you know, and then we're gonna end up, we're, we'll take this down to probably some 180. You can see the grinding marks here, grinding marks here, over here. Right? So we're going to end up filling all this with some high build afterward. I'm not sure. That must have been a really deep spot there. So we're going to fix all this first with some body filler, feather it out, and uh, deal with that. Okay guys, let's uh, let's take a second here. Very important, make sure you're always wearing your PPE. That's personal protective equipment. You're working with chemicals. Look how brown that mask is from the dust. You'd be inhaling that. Now, you probably don't need an N95 mask, but maybe overkill. Anyway, hearing protection, always very important. Oh, why am I yelling right now? I didn't even realize. Okay, so what have we done so far? So. I was gonna go with a 180, I went with an 80 grit. Take everything down, I did use the angle grinder. Um, I have a 90 degree one somewhere, I don't know where it is. Anyway, and I, uh, I covered all the rust spots everywhere. Or I sorry, I ground them flat everywhere. And then I ended up using uh, some rust converter. Now this doesn't stop rust, 
The only way to stop rust is to cut it out. And even that doesn't work amazing. Uh, but rust converter slows it down. You can think of it as medication when uh, you're ill. Um, essentially what it does is it gives the uh, surface or whatever you're applying something to bite onto. So uh, we got the rust converter after this cures a little bit. I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, body filler to some of the really low spots. There's some extremely low ones over there. There's a couple up here. Uh, this hood did have some work done over there, so I'll have to patch that up. Uh, but overall, um, you can see the spots that do have the rust converter and that don't now. The ones that do have rust converter are much darker than the ones that don't. So um, I'm going to hit it one more time on the front yet. I'll do that off camera and then we'll take lunch and then we're going to come back. We're going to put some body filler on this. And the body filler isn't to stop rust. It's not to hide anything. It's just part of body work. Um, we're going to um, fill in all these low spots. Uh, some from rust kind of looks like the moon there. Um, some from rust, some from uh, rock chips themselves, some just from grinding. Um, but anyway, we're going to fill those and then I'm going to sand this whole hood. I'm probably going to do it in a 180. So this was 80 grit. I'm probably going to do it in a 180. And then I'm going to come back and do the whole thing in a 320. And then uh, we'll take a break there and see how we're looking. I'd like to get this thing in primer so it can cure overnight. Tomorrow we can sand it. We'll end up sanding and probably a four and then a 600. And then we're going to paint and it's going to look like a new vehicle. We're going to give it back to Dan, the man he's going to be pumped. Okay guys, we have reached the next point in our project here. You can see how the uh, rust um, the uh, rust converter has turned uh, this bare steel into black. Everything's dry. It's not tacky. So next we're going to add a little bit of spot putty. People call it Bondo. Bondo is just a brand. I actually don't use Bondo. Well, this ironically scraper is Bondo. But um, Anyway, so we're going to mix it up. Don't flop it over on itself like this and get air inside of it. Don't do that. Stir it, scrape it, stir it until it's all nice and blue. Just like that. You can use a piece of cardboard. This is just a piece of signboard I had laying around. And now you don't want a lot of this because there is no structural integrity to it. You can go around and you can feel where all your low spots are. Just like that. You don't need a lot of it. We're going to be sanding most of it off anyway. I'm going to fill all the low spots. Just like that. See now why we put that plastic down. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes now. You can tell it's fairly cured. It's not tacky. I lied. Oh no, it's my glove. It's not tacky and uh, you know it's got a hard touch to it. I did go around with a plastic razor blade and scrape off some of the bigger clumps in places. Uh, kind of helps eliminate some of the sanding. So anyway now we're going to use our orbital sander and we're going to hit this with 180 grit and knock everything level. We're going to also do the painted surface and get everything as flat as we can. Um, our paper may gum up a little bit due to this not being completely cured, but that's okay. We'll just work through it.
Okay, that's it for now guys. So if you're wondering what happened, um, I messed up recording there. Um, I ended up, I sanded it with uh, 80, then 180, then 320. I put the high build epoxy primer down. Uh, it is direct to metal, it's got an etch in it. Um, tomorrow we're gonna come back, we're gonna hit this with 400 grit and then 600 grit. We're gonna lay some paint down. Now traditionally you'd wanna blend it into the fenders. Um, we're not gonna do that today, I don't feel like it. It's too much work. Um, so we're just going to butt match it. Uh, we're going to get it as close as we can. As you saw before, it didn't match at all. So anything's an improvement at this point. Um, anyway, it's dinner time. I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat. Uh, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out so far. I don't see any of the higher low spots yet, although we haven't started blocking. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. See you tomorrow. Hey guys, we're back. It's day two. It's early in the morning. Primer cured beautifully last night. Everything's looking nice and flat. We're gonna end up hitting this with a 400 and then a 600. Make sure it's nice and level and ready for the paint. You know, there's a couple of little things here and there, but they'll come out when we sand it. You should traditionally block this with like a block and a uh, uh, piece of paper, sandpaper. Um, I'm just gonna hit it with the orbital quick. I'm not looking for any fancy finishes here by any means. Uh, a couple things to note. Um, I did spray this yesterday with a, what's called a HLVP. It's a high volume, low pressure paint gun. I was running it at 26 PSI and I had a 1.8 tip on it. Um, now you don't need one of those. Now you could go to a lot of paint mixing stores, auto body supply stores, not shops, stores, and they custom mix these for you in an aerosol can. Um, it just costs a lot more. Now these guns are relatively inexpensive. I've got, uh, so this one, for example, um, at Princess Auto was probably about 50 or $60 uh, about 10 years ago. So they're, they're not, you can buy expensive ones, don't get me wrong. You can buy, you can spend a lot of money on these things. Some of them have lights on them and stuff like, you know, um, but for all intents and purposes and what we're doing and stuff, like very cheap. I painted, I think this is the one I bought. I painted a Chevy Cobalt with it and it looked decent after. This is a 1.8 tip. I have a smaller one we're going to end up doing the paint and the clear with. We're going to use a one point, probably 1.3, 1.4 tip. Uh, same thing though, 26 PSI. Um, you don't need a big compressor or anything for them. But again, if you don't have a compressor, my compressor is uh, probably older than I am. I got it at a garage sale. It's nothing amazing by any means. Anyway, um, again, if, uh, if you don't have that stuff, a lot of stores, um, they custom mix paint for you. Uh, here in Saskatoon, uh, Walker's Auto Body Supply um, mixes everything for you. Um, you take up a sample and your VIN number because 
just the VIN number isn't enough to get what you need out of it, out of the color, because these things oxidize and they fade and everything, right? Especially something like this, it's been sitting out in the sun. So I always take them a sample. I took Walker's Auto, the, uh, the gas door off this one, so they could get a, a good sample of what we're after. <clears throat> so anyway, I've got the paint and everything. It looks pretty good. Um, we're going to end up spraying it, and then we'll let it sit overnight. Um, again, I don't have a paint booth, obviously. In fact, in my shop in, uh, in Martinsville there, um, I paint, painted my entire Hummer, um, primed it and painted it. The priming doesn't have a lot of overspray. Um, the paint and clear has a pile of overspray. Um, so with that said, what we're going to end up doing, we'll sand this. We're going to peel the plastic off. We're going to push it outside. We're going to blow it off really good. Um, then we're going to tack cloth it. We'll give it some final wipe. This is all stuff you can get at the store. It's not expensive. And, um, and it lasts forever. That gallon of uh, gun wash I used yesterday is for sure 10 years old. Walker's Auto, where I got it, has changed their symbol since I bought it. It's, it's old. So, anyway, um, yeah, we're going to get this all done, uh, cleaned up. I did clean up under the edge a little bit here a little bit. There was a little bit of, little bit of rust there. You know, a guy is almost better when a hood's at this point, just getting um, a used hood at a salvage yard or something. Um, however, this is more cost effective. Now, if you've walked through the salvage yard and you found a hood that's the same color, cool, grab it, hammer it on, life's good. Um, not always the case, so if it was a white or black, pretty easy to do. But anyway, we're going to get cruising here. We're going to get some sanding done. Like I say, we're going to hit this in a 400 grit. Then we're going to hit it in a 600 grit. And then we're going to spray the base coat down. We're going to let that uh, cure for probably like 10, 15 minutes. It doesn't take long. And then we will hit it with the clear coat. And then we're going to let that sit overnight until tomorrow. Um, at which point, like, we'll assess it for runs and um, orange peel and stuff like that. I don't think it's going to be too bad, though. So uh, let's get cruising. So this is the finish you can see, right? You can see it's got a little bit of orange peel or texture to it. This is when you hit it with the sander quick, and you don't want that. This is what we're after. See how smooth and consistent this is? This is what we want. This is just in 400, I went over it really quick. You want the whole hood. When you're sanding, if you have any of this or this mist, and it doesn't look like this, the paint's not gonna stick. So you need it to look like this. So we're gonna do this whole thing just like that. And it's probably gonna take an hour or two, but we'll get it done.
Okay, guys, so let's pretend you're doing this at your house in your garage. Um, you definitely want your N95 or equivalent mask. You're dealing with chemicals, dust, all kinds of stuff. Um, I did burn through in a couple places. I went and I sprayed down some etch after um, just to deal with those. The 400 like we talked about and then finished in the 600. Um, so next what you're going to see here is I'm going to wipe this all down with a final wipe and some blue shop towel. And then I'm going to hit it with a tack cloth. We're going to be mixing our paint. Our paint base coat is going to be a 50-50 uh, ratio of base coat and reducer. You do not need a hardener in it. We're going to spray that on. We're going to probably do a mist coat and then a heavy coat and a mist coat, something like that. We need a 1.3 tip on our high pressure, low volume gun that we talked about. Again, you can get single stage rattle cans at most of your local, local places. Um, after that sits for about 45 minutes and uh, dries up pretty good or cures, we're going to hit it with the clear coat. That's where things get tricky. Um, we're going to be mixing that with reducer and hardener uh, at a two to one to one ratio. Again, with a one three tip, 26 PSI in the, tip, in the gun. Um, if you do it in single stage with the rattle cans I talked about, it's no problem. You just hit it and walk away. Um, pros and cons of that, of course, you can do some research on that. Um, let me let it sit. Um, in about four hours, five hours, the clear coat will become hard. I got it about 26 degrees in here right now. Um, and then from there, uh, tomorrow morning, the vehicle will be mobile. You don't want to polish it or put any PPF or anything on it for at least probably a month while the gas is off completely. Um, so anyway, let's get cruising. I'm going to time lapse all of this so you guys aren't bored. And uh, if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments. I'll answer them best I can for you. And uh, let's cruise. Well, and that anyway gets us in the right direction, I guess. It's pretty good. It's not my best work, but uh, it's not bad. We'll take this. We'll take this plastic off here tomorrow, and we'll see how close we match it again. Uh, the proper way of doing it would be you would take some of the paint from there and you blend it into there, and you'd re-clear re that whole fender. But we're not going to get into that today. So right now. This is called a butt blend. We're just going to see how it looks close enough. Luckily, the headlight kind of covers over half the fender. So really, we're only dealing with well, it's probably 12 inches. But you know what I'm saying. We'll come back tomorrow. Hey, guys, it's the next day. I've got everything cured here. It's nice and dry. There's a couple little dust specks, but we can wet sand that out. Otherwise, it looks really good. Let's get the plastic off and see how the color matches up. Well, guys, it's not bad. It's not bad. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm happy with that. That's an improvement. We'll check out the next one.